Okay, welcome to In the Dirt with Mike. It's May the 18th. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon. Now, I told everybody on Facebook I was coming to the racetrack. I'm here. Here we are at the racetrack. Now, you're probably looking around and saying, well, Mike Donald's just standing in a field. This is not a racetrack. Well, race fans, I am standing on the ground that is formerly known as East Lexington Speedway. That's right. 1970s and early 1970s, this was a four-tenths clay oval, and it's this is about a mile and a half east of my hometown of Lexington, Virginia. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of where this is located, this is about 10 miles north of Natural Bridge Speedway. It's probably about 30 miles south of East Side Speedway, and this was, like I said, a four-tenths clay oval that was opened in the 1970s by the Beverly family here in Rockbridge County and a lot of the drivers that raced at Eastside raced at Natural Bridge Speedway also raced here. Now this facility was open maybe a year at the most. I almost closed as soon as it opened. Only about a year that it was open. Um, originally um, in the 70s it opened late in October. This was, and this was like 1972, 1973. But basically, from what I'm told, this track was Friday nights, East Side was Saturday, and Snatcher Bridge was Sunday. This track was not even open maybe a year. Um, I don't know really the story as to why it closed. I have been told they had good car counts here. Not really sure why it closed, but Unfortunately, it did. This is all that's left of East Lexington Speedway. Um, as you can see, where I'm standing right now is actually what was the back stretch. And I'm going to step out of the way just a little bit. You can see down here, of course, the, the tree line off to your left is where the outside guardrail was. This little fence line or tree line off to the right here is where the inside guardrail was. And you can see the track where it went down. And of course turned around the turn going off to the right that was actually turn three and turn four now i'm gonna walk on over here and if you look i don't know if you can see but right there there's a couple of posts that was the post that marked the inside guardrail from the inside pit area and of course i was walking around i actually found a piece of one of the old posts that was lined here on what was the back stretch but those were the posts that was the inside of the straightaway and of course the pit area just over there and I'm gonna pan over here a little bit more and if we can close in you can see some of the original guardrail there's some of the original guardrail right there with some posts that was the outside of the straightaway so we have the outside guardrail there and then of course if we could come back down you can see where back straightaway went in and you can see how it curves around that was uh, actually that would have been turns three and four what I just showed you would have been turns one and two because if you look straight across over here this was the pit area and I don't know if you can make it out but we're going to go up here in a little bit race fans but that's the remnants up there in that tree line of what was the flag stand and this track was was built really very similar to Natural Bridge where the the main straightaway where the flag stand was was furthest from the main access road. Now most people that go to Natural Bridge today notice that the flag stand is closest to the main access road. That's not how it was when Natural Bridge was first built. When Natural Bridge was first built the flag stand was actually over on the back straightaway. And that's exactly how East Lexington Speedway here was built. The flag stand was on the back side, which made that the home straightaway, which made that one and two, and this turns three and four. And, of course, you can see that clay up there. That was actually banking. And, of course, people would come in and sit in their lawn chairs up above there. And that was the main straightaway, even though the access road was closest to this side, the back straightaway. So if that makes sense. But basically... It was configured and built really the same way that Natural Bridge Speedway was originally built before it was reconfigured 
in the early 1980s and natural bridge became a 3 8 mile putting the flag stand on the side that it's on now but uh, I know Ben Jamerson raced here um, obviously if he raced here um, you know I don't want to make great assumptions but you've got to figure you know drivers like Herb Carwell, Petey Coffey, Tommy Bear, Buzzy Walters, uh, Bob Dobbins, Alan Dillard may have come here a time or two of course, uh, I guess a happening place in the early 70s. Um, actually, if you, I looked at some of the old original mo uh, posters, advertising posters, and actually, according to that, I think Hank Williams Jr. actually performed a concert here at East Lexington Speedway. So, um, looked like it was a great facility at one time. Um, I hope with the camera angles you can see some of the uh, track. We're going to go across on the other side from the flag stand and show you. So, hang around check out of course i hope you're enjoying this segment hang around for part two we're going to go on the other side of the track thanks all right race fans back to in the dirt with mike didn't quite make it over to the flag stand but i wanted to stop and show you something we're actually in the infield pit area right over here to my right which would be your left you can see this structure and i'm guessing maybe speculating this may have been an infield concession stand may have been an infield payout window where you drivers like to come get your money at the end of the races. This is what's left of that. I want to show you something else interesting. This would have been turn three and four. If you look right here, some of the old posts and some of the old guard railing still remains from turns three and four. Of course, significant drop off on the back side where this banking was put in. And I wanted to show you something. If you come down this way, Actually, I'm going to go over here. But this was actually the turn, and I don't know if you can notice it, fans, but the banking still exists. So I got one right leg up higher than the left. The banking still exists here on this turn. So I thought I'd show you the guardrail, some of the banking. Stay tuned, we're going to show you some more. Okay, just show you one of something else. This is still coming outside of turn three and four. This is a post that contained the guardrail. Now, I'm just speculating, race fans. I'm going to come down here a little closer where you can hear me. I'm just speculating. But you see there's a little roadway here. And what I'm speculating may have been back in the day was the race teams may have actually come through right here with their haulers, their trailers, came down across the turn into the pit area that's out of view. They may have actually come from the access road, circled in behind turns three and four, and came in this road here and down across this road into the pit area. Um, it's just speculation on my part, but but I'm thinking that post looks more like an end post than it does anything, and maybe that's where the guardrail split that allowed teams to come across. All right, our field trip continues here at East Lexington Speedway. This would have been the front straightaway, of course, some of the original clay from the front straightaway here at East Lexington Speedway. You can see, there goes the straightaway on the other side of that telephone pole there. You can see the banking, that's turns one and two. This was the main straightaway, or the front straightaway, where the flag stand was, where the scores, where we race announcers probably stood in the day. Follow along, we'll keep it running. I want to show you something interesting here. We're going to come across here. We'll navigate through these trees. And right here, if you can see this board and this board here, I'm speculating this was probably the, a set of steps that took you up to the flag stand. So we'll pause it here. We'll start again here in just a second, race fans. All right, race fans, Mike Donald back here in the dirt with Mike. Right behind me are the remains of the original flag stand slash press box slash announcer's booth. You can see it here, and we're going to show you a view from here in just a second. All right, better view here. This was the back side of the flag stand. Of course, the original steps that went into it is gone, but you can see these boards here on the left that can form the box. That was the front. This is the right side. And of course, I don't know if we can get, but we got the original post with nails in it. I don't know if the sun's gonna block it, but you can see the electrical wires. 
down here on the bottom you can see electrical wiring and this was the flag stand of course unfortunately the tree is blocking the area here but this would have overlooked the entire facility going this way so where we were was this way of course all the trees have grown up blocked it now but this is where your flagmen your race announcers your scores maybe members of the press would have stayed in the early 70s we'll come back here we'll pause this and we'll give you a panoramic view of this thanks all right last view of the east lexington speedway back off to my right your left that's the flag stand that we were just on and I'm speculating that probably where I'm standing is where people would bring their lawn chairs and set up. This is where the spectators sat. And I don't know if we can come down a little bit. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but this would be the drop off. And the straightaway is just down here. And I'm speculating that maybe it would have been like a lot of tracks at that time that some of the guardrail really wasn't a guardrail, it was like a banking. Because it shows banking here and there's no signs of posts or guardrail here like it was on the other straightaway. So I'm thinking maybe this was just banking, no guardrail here, and the straightaway is actually down there. And of course, just off to the right, I don't know if you can see it, that would have been turns one and two, the banking. You look over, there is the pit area. That group of trees would have been that payout or concession area. And of course you can see the post and the guardrail on the back straightaway. But uh, race fans, this was East Lexington Speedway in the early 1970s. Again, a four tenths clay, clay oval. And you know, race fans, um, this is one of many tracks that are no longer um, functional anymore. Uh, for example, um, Buena Vista, Virginia had a racetrack called Riverview Speedway that was open approximately in the 1960s. Um, I believe owned by the Hill family. And that's probably maybe three miles from here. That's no longer open. The Craigsville Speedway out in the Rock Ridge Bass Goshen area, probably 25 miles from here, that's no longer open. The Devil's Bowl Speedway in Stanton, no longer open. The Airport Speedway in Waynesboro, no longer open. Massanutten had a speedway, no longer open. Tracks by the dozen, dozens opened up in that era. And you know, race fans, when we look now at dirt track racing and, you know, the World of Outlaw Late Model Series, the UFO Series, Carolina Clash Series, the Three State Flyer Series, um, the uh, Steel Block Bandit Series, which I'm very proud of, um, you see those different series and super late model divisions, Steel Block Late Model divisions. You look at thriving racetracks now like Hagerstown and tracks like that you know it was facilities like this and families like the Beverly's that had the courage to try to open up speedways like this even though unfortunately it did not last for the Beverly family but it was families like that and promoters that would build these racetracks that really paved the way for what we see in dirt track racing now all the different late model series and divisions and the thriving racetracks you really got to pay homage and a sincere appreciation for facilities like this because this is what helped pave the way for what true dirt track racing fans love today when we go to our individual racetracks. And race fans, I hope you have enjoyed this. I will try to get out to Riverview Speedway, Craigsville Speedway, do some more of these segments. But uh, in the meantime, Facebook friends, if, if you have pictures of East Lexington Speedway when it was thriving, please post them on Facebook. Also race fans, Tina Wyatt Breeden, a friend of mine on Facebook, has a page called Doing Dirt the Old Timers Way. So if you have photos of East Lexington Speedway, not only can you put them on each other's Facebook, but put them on her page. I'm sure she would enjoy it. Great pictures, I'm sure somebody's gotta have some. If you have some great stories from this racetrack, please post it on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, race fans, again, I hope you've enjoyed what you can still make out of the East Lexington Speedway. But you can really look, and if you use your imagination, you can actually see that four tenths clay oval in here. Race fans, this will do it. And we'll try to get some other ghost racetracks coming up in the future. This is Mike Donald for In the Dirt with Mike.